Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to create this very cool toggle switch component using React, so uh, stay tuned. So inside of Visual Studio Code, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to name this toggle switch. And we're going to create an index.js file. And we're going to import React. And we're also going to import style components. And now we're going to need three styled objects. But first of all, we're going to create the class, of course. So export default toggle switch. And it needs to be a class. Like that. We need a constructor because we're going to manage the state internally here. I'm just going to set the state to be an empty object for now. And then we need the render method. I'm just going to return. And now we're going to create the main container for this uh, component. So const container is equal to styled. And this is going to be a label. And this label will have some properties. The first one is position absolute, uh, relative, sorry. We need a display. And this is going to be inline block. We need a width, 30 pixels for now and the height, and we're going to set that to 16 pixels. Then we're going to create a new styled object. And this is going to be a span component. And this needs position absolute. It needs uh, a pointer cursor. It will need a top value of 0, a left value of 0, a right value of 0, and a bottom value of 0. So all of those needs to be 0. Then we need a color for this, and we're going to set the background color to a light gray for now. And that is not spelled like that. And now I just entered my Visual Studio in full screen, which is uh, great. Uh, so let's just uh, do that. And we also need, need to rename that property correctly. Then we need a transition. Transition. And this is going to be transi transition during 0 0.4 seconds for now. We need a border radius. And this is going to be 15 pixels. And then we're going to create a pseudo element. And this will need an absolute position. It will need to set the content to an empty string. We need a height and a width. And these are going to be 15 pixels, both of them. So this is basically the small, uh, you can call it the thumb, uh, that you can switch back and forth. And it needs a background background color as well. And this is going to be a darker gray. And this also needs a transition. So this is the transition for sliding it back and forth. And then we're going to set the border radius to 50%. Uh, Great. One final component here, a style component, and this is going to be the input, which will handle all of our inputs, but this will be an invisible component. Style.input. And this will need to have a checked property. So checked. If the slider is checked, Then we want to set the background color to, I have a color preset here, so I'm just going to type that in real quick. 
0365B2, which is a nice color, I think. And then we need another pseudo element. And this is going to have a transform property, which is going to translate the position x uh, 15 pixels back and forth. And then we also need a background color. So this is going to be a change of color of the small circle in the middle. So when it's checked, we want the color to be white. And now we're going to go back up to our container and we're going to say that the input needs to be invisible. So input, and we're going to say that this will have a property which is display none. Now we can go ahead and use this. So we can use the slider here, uh, the co <laughs> container, sorry. So we're gonna paste that in here. And then we need a slider input. This will go right here. And this will need to have the type check box like that. And then we also need the actual slider. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and use this component. So I'm just going to use this in my app folder. So I'm importing it. Like that. And now we can just enter this in here. And now we can check this out. Bam. Now we can see that we have a slider input, which is really cool. And you see the animations here. So we have both animations on the track and the thumb. So they, they're changing color. Uh, and you can choose whatever color you want. But now we need a way to actually control the state of this. So this will have, we can either have the master component control the state of this, but I'm just going to control it internally. So we're going to add a property called checked to our state. And then we're going to say checked equals to this dot state dot checked. And then we also need a on change function here. So on change. And then we want to set this dot state. And it's not like that. It's this dot set state checked and we're going to set this to the event i'm going to say event dot target dot checked so now this internal state here is controlling this so we can set this to true and it will be true and checked and we can set this to false and it will be unchecked you can go ahead and add your uh, prop types here, and you can actually control the state from uh, the parent component instead, which will make it a bit easier. Uh, and I can show you how to do that as well. So let's import prop types. And we're going to take this toggle switch here and say prop types. And we're going to say checked which is going to be a boo we also need a callback function so on change this is going to be a function so let's remove this state and this constructor and now we can say that this dot props dot checked and instead of setting the state here we can call the on change method so this dot props dot on change either target or checked. Now the way we can use this is we can go into our app component and we can create an internal state here instead. So this is the parent component. Remove that. So checked, false. And then we can add this here. Checked is equal to this.state.checked. And then we also need the callback function. So on change and this will take in the actual value now. And we're going to go ahead and do this dot set state checked to the value. And now we can control it from the main component. So hopefully this was useful for you. Thank you and uh, I'll see you the next time. Bye.